Hi, hello again on my scientific and educational channel discoversocialsciences.com uh, In this video I am developing uh, on let's say educational applications of my own experience as a small investor in the stock market. I have already published on YouTube the first video in this series so this one will be published uh, with like hashtag 2 number in the same series. Uh, roughly speaking, if you have watched the, the first video, it is just a reminder. You can, uh, you can consider this series of videos as me sharing my own experience for educational purposes. I am an economist. I teach economics and management. And I uh, guess that sharing my experience is like the most genuine way of educating people in economics and management, precisely. Uh, so here is, uh, let's say, the starting point uh, which I can start this video with. Uh, so here is the my experience like in numbers. I started to doing like systematic investment in the stock market by the end of January this year, by the end of January uh, 2020. And just as in this slide, the bottom line of my good decisions and bad decisions made me uh, achieve a 48% of return on investment in 2020. It is a good result. Uh, I know there are people who earn more. I know there are people who earn less. In my case, it is like a moderately good achievement. And that's why, without false modesty, I think I can share my experience and use it as an educational tool. Now, to complete the picture, I break down that 48% of return on cash invested uh, into two parts. There are the 35% of return. Here you have it, yeah the 35% of return which I um, have or which I made on the currently held 27 investment positions. In a moment I will pass to discussing my portfolio uh, as it is composed and structured now. Uh, so um, uh, you will see what those 27 investment positions are specifically. Uh, for the moment, uh, you can assume that most of those 48% of return that I have or, or that I had as for yesterday, as for August 25th, is made precisely of the return I have on the portfolio I hold now. And uh, on the top of that, there are 13% of return which I made at the bottom line on my past and closed investment positions. Uh, so I consider, roughly speaking, those 35% as the fruit of learning uh, which I had been uh, going through with those past and closed investment positions uh, which brought me 13% of return. So here is my portfolio as of August 25th, 2020. I was preparing that presentation yesterday. Uh, so just let me check how visible it is on the screen. Uh, okay, maybe I will make it slightly bigger on the screen. No, impossible. Okay. Uh, so I will magnify it inside the window. So you have two, two sections or two columns in that table. 
you have one column which is entitled domestic Polish market. So these are stocks which I hold uh, uh, in the uh, Warsaw Stock Exchange. And here is the international market. The international market mostly encompasses the German stock market and, uh, the, and the United States, so the, the New York Stock Exchange. In um, like bold blue, bold dark blue, I marked uh, those investment positions which brought me the greatest return those uh, let's say those champions so quickly browsing through the table you can see biomed lublin a polish biotech company which is right now launching a medicine against covid19 mercator medical uh, which is a general supplier of medical equipment and also in the Polish stock market, I have my biggest failure, my biggest loss for the moment. It is a, the company called Hemp and Wood. They are involved in plantations of hemp. And this year they were doing sort of tentative jumps precisely into the so-called pandemic market. So the market of medicines. Uh, and tests, mostly tests uh, for COVID-19. Uh, I think that this negative yield is due to two factors. First of all, it is a small company uh, listed in the so-called alternative market, so not in the main market in the Warsaw Stock Exchange, but in a peripheral one called the New Connect. And in that new connect market, those swings in price can be really high. On the, in the international market, my three biggest, uh, my th like three biggest wins, those marked in um, bold dark blue, are First Solar Incorporated, which is an, a US-based company specialized in the photovoltaic solar industry and two companies specialized in logistics and uh, express deliveries so FedEx Corporation and United Parcel. Save for uh, the first solar my biggest gains were to be quite frank gains on the pandemic because those huge rates of return on those Polish companies in the field of biotechnology and medical supplies, it is due to COVID-19. The same thing for those two logistic companies, FedEx and UPS. It is because of lockdowns, people order more by express deliveries and those and at a certain point of time at a certain point in time i had that feeling that those companies will rise and the feeling was accurate now before i go further because uh, further i will go in one special case general electric which for the moment is a failure for me i made the loss of a of minus 8.6%. Uh, but before I go there, uh, a general remark. As you see, this portfolio of mine, you can see diversity. That the diversity has like two branchings, two avenues, which I will allow myself to follow now to explain you the context. As I was starting to invest, uh, like by the end of January 2020, I was holding just a few stocks, like three, five. And that diversity was sort of progressing uh, in my investment decisions. Over those past seven months, 
I sort of learned to diversify my portfolio, my investment portfolio. And this is essentially the basic lesson that you can learn in any uh, course or in any textbook of how to invest in the stock market. Uh, people keep repeating or experts keep repeating diversify. Now in my own investment decisions I have sort of very specifically experienced the reasons behind that recommendation to diversify. Please <coughs> pay attention to the, to the fact that this portfolio shows in its diversity shows alternative scenarios of what could have happened to my money, of what could have happened to me as an investor over those seven months. For example, if I put all those nearly $8,000 which I invested in the stock market, if I had put it in the stock of Mercator Medical, instead of having 48% of return on my invested cash, I would have more than 300%. So instead of being now with a little bit more than $11,000 worth of stock, I would be at like uh, 22,000, so the double of what I have now. Uh, if I had invested in Biomed Lublin, I would have more than 100% of return. Huh? If I had invested, for example, everything I had in that single company, First Solar, I would have 75%, 75.6%. So these are like the optimistic scenarios. But there is the pessimistic too. If I had invested everything I had in hemp and wood, I would be at like half of the capital I invested. So I would have lost uh, very nearly like uh, very nearly four thousand dollars out of the nearly eight that I invested in the stock market. If I had invested everything in General Electric, I would have lost eight point six percent. So I would have lost, roughly speaking, $600. And <clears throat> this is very largely what I was experiencing or had been experiencing in the beginning of this year, when I was starting to invest, when I was building just a small portfolio of three to five investment positions, these were like the big swings in my results and the big swings in my emotions too. So one day I could see that I earned like 100% like on the cash invested. The next week or one week later I could see that I have lost uh, like al almost 50% of what I had. Huh? This was that uh, crazy roller coaster in the stock market. And, and this is what pushed me like intuitively, instinctively, because now I know that this push to diversify was uh, very largely subconscious. It was intuitive. It pushed me to diversify my portfolio, to like calm down my emotions. So I learned like by trial and error that important lesson that if I want to be an efficient investor, I have to match uh, my money with my emotions. I can be efficient just to the extent that I acknowledge and control those uh, strangely strong emotions that accompany investment of my own money in the stock market. So in purely practical terms, uh, there is a lesson. Probably it would be hard to nail down this portfolio 
of those 27 companies, like all in one go. I couldn't predict, I couldn't possibly predict, at least with the limited cognitive capacities which I have, I couldn't predict in the beginning of the year that if I invest in exactly those companies over seven months, they will bring me exactly those returns and they will bring me, as a result, exactly those 48 percent. It was virtually impossible for me to predict that exact result as a balance between all those specific local small outcomes. Uh, those outcomes sort of balanced each other and gave that nice positive bottom line because I was building that portfolio progressively. I invested in three companies, I observed my results, I panicked a little bit, I sold a little bit, uh, then I was doing some crazy acquisitions. For example, I bought some, uh, some stock of Aston Martin. I don't even know why today. Of course, I lost money on those uh, like random decisions, but this was the important lesson that the construction of my investment portfolio is a step-by-step -step process that it is not really possible or it, is, or it is very risky to skip steps in that process. It's better to give myself some time to invest by installments, to invest by small portions. Uh, now I want to focus on one case on General Electric Company. This is like my... Well, now as I have dived a little bit into their corporate documents, which I will show you in a moment, right now it is not that much of a surprise. But at a certain point in time, I was surprised with that failure, with that negative result. I said to myself, OK, I have a positive return on NVIDIA. I have a positive return on SAP. Maybe I can have a positive return on another technological company. Here you can see Daimler AG. So the, the company which owns the Mercedes brand, good return, uh, plus 15%. So why did I lose money on General Electric? And here I go like into the second methodological volume of that presentation, of that video, how to study failures in order to understand where they come from and uh, to understand how to invest, let's say, more wisely in the future. So I want to dive a little bit into that case of General Electric Company. In order to show you like the way I do it, I will start from the beginning. So right now, in the window of the video, you have my internet browser, Google Chrome. So what I do? In the browser, I type the following phrase. General Electric Investor Relations. This one. General Electric Investor Relations and my first hit or the first hit on the list uh, yielded by Professor Google, hello Google, uh, is this GECOM Investors Relations. Uh, for your information, for the information of all those who want to invest in the stock market or who want to just study and microeconomics, uh, study finance. Every company which is listed in the stock market, in the public stock market, has a special type of website. Besides like their main site, they have that website called Investors Relations or Investor Relations, which shows the business of the company like from the kitchen door perspective. 
you can see a little bit the inside. So from that uh, site, I downloaded this 10Q. In a moment, I show you what is 10Q in this case. So now we go to the 10Q in question. The 10Q is the quarterly report pursuant to section excuse me, pursuant to section 13 or 15D of the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 for the quarterly period ended June 13 June 30th 2020. 10Q is the quarterly form for quarterly financial results. Uh, at least in the in the US based or US listed companies. In this case it is the uh, a summary of financial results by uh, the end of the second quarter so for the first half of the year. And by reading that report I wanted to find out what made them perform so poorly in the stock market because when I was investing in their stock it seemed to be like on the rise. It, uh, there seemed to be like a peak. Maybe I can show you the graph as a matter of fact. Just let me see if I have that graph open. Yes. So I will make another scene in that video with the graph of GE. Ah, cool, we have it. Okay, so I go there to explain you the context of my invested, of my investment. Here you can see the graph of the price in like the blue line. Is it well centered? Yes, it's well centered. Uh, the blue line is the graph of price uh, in the stock market and it stretches from March 17th until August 24th. Uh, now, I uh, bought the stock of General Electric around at that peak. You can see it, maybe I can mark it here. Uh, yes, it is visible. That little window that I marked uh, in, 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 in the graph, it is the moment when I was buying. I would even say that I uh, invested here, right? I was ob observing that. I was uh, thinking, okay, the price grows. I can see that technological companies, as for example NVIDIA or Daimler or First Solar, they are all growing. Why shouldn't General Electric grow? Especially that I knew that they have a whole division of medical technologies, which in the times of pandemic can be quite valuable. So I was buying like approximately here and then it fell and I was wondering why. Uh, so now I go to the fundamental factors. So I go back to the report and I will do together with you, like in real time, a little bit of fundamental research. Why that company is apparently undervalued in the stock market. So here is the table of contents. Uh, we have about General Electric uh, and then management's discussion and analysis of financial condition and results of operations. Let's see. So I will make it make maybe slightly bigger to fit it exactly between the margins of the window. How does it go? Okay, great. So let's read it. General Electric company is a high-tech industrial company that operates worldwide through its four industrial segments power renewable energy 
aviation and healthcare, and its financial services segment, capital. See the consolidated results section of management's discussion and analysis of financial condition results of operations and note two to the consolidated financial statements for information regarding our results of operations. Okay, what do they say later? The consolidated financial statements of General Electric Company combine the industrial manufacturing and, service and services businesses of GE with the financial services businesses of GE Capital. Uh, certain columns and rows within tables may not add due to the use of rounded numbers. Okay. Uh, so these are the formalities I want to... Yes. Here I have consolidated results, significant developments. Right, this is what I wanted to read. Okay, significant developments. Coronavirus disease 2019 COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has significantly impacted global economies, resulting in workforce and travel restrictions, supply chain and production disruptions, and reduced demand and spending across many sectors. Since the latter part of the first quarter, these factors have had a material adverse impact on our operations, financial performance and prices of our securities, as well as on the operations and financial performance of many of the customers and suppliers in industries that we serve. This section provides a brief overview of how we are responding to current and potential impacts related to COVID-19 on GE's operations and financial condition and results with additional details provided throughout the management discussion and analysis and other relevant sections of this report. Okay, I try to scroll quickly. So here that whole first paragraph is like a, a generality. They essentially comment on what they did. So, for example, we have adopted operational and governance rhythms across the company and with our board of directors uh, to coordinate and oversee actions related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, cool, but this is not what I am looking for. Here, I think I have finally found something important, something that explains me why General Electric is so undervalued in the stock market. Here. Aviation, yeah, this, while factors related directly and indirectly to the COVID-19 pandemic have been impacting operations and financial performance at varying levels across all our businesses, the most significant impact to date has been at our aviation segment and our GE Capital Aviation Services, aircraft leasing business with our capital segment. Here you are. Yes, we know that airlines and aviation, uh, all their business has uh, tremendously suffered from the pandemic. So now I understand. GE was and still is engaged in a segment of industry which is clearly in big trouble in connection with the pandemic. And it doesn't look like uh, they get out of that trouble soon. Yes, the pandemic is having a material adverse effect on the, on the global airline industry, resulting in reduced flight schedules worldwide and increased number of idle aircraft, lower utilization, workforce reductions and declining financial performance within the airline industry, as well as requests for government financial assistance by various industry participants. Cool, now I understand. So, to sum up, in this video you could see and I discussed like three important things. The first important thing is the importance and the significance of what we call the portfolio of investment. I hope I showed you that the portfolio I have, which is quite effective in terms of return, is not like a magic trick, something that I just guessed at, at some point and it just worked. I could have guessed better as I was explaining here. 
if I invested all my money in that single Polish medical company, Mercator Medical, I could have made three times, more than three times the cash invested. So the portfolio which I have is certainly not the most efficient among all the possible versions that I could have built. It is quite efficient because it has been built by trial and error. And that sum total of trials, errors and learning on those errors brought me to the portfolio I have now. So the investment portfolio I showed you can be considered as many alternative scenarios. What would have happened if I invested all my cash in just one single investment position in that portfolio? So you can see like a broad range of possible developments from the zero point. In my case, the, that day zero, it was like the end of January 2020. And you could see a bit of what is called fundamental research or fundamental analysis as regards one particular company in my investment portfolio, namely General Electric. So this is all in this video. I hope you, you have been having a little bit of fun with that content uh, and I hope it was somehow useful for your own in, in investment strategies and for your own learning of economics and finance. So this is all for now and until the next video.